Welcome to A Human Perspective, a podcast where I'll be sharing work and personal experiences and learnings. I will also chop it up with guests from time to time who will also share their own perspectives. I can't promise everything you hear on this podcast will always be right, but I can promise to always give you a human perspective. My name is Lola Ogentoken, and I'm your host. Let's go. around a quarter of a million people being laid off in the tech space alone. I've said this before, I don't see this trend coming to an end anytime soon. I think we've probably still got a year and a bit to go for things to settle or readjust, whatever it is that's happening right now. I talk more specifically about layoffs in a previous episode called When the Bubble Bursts, the Layoffs of 2022. You can find out more there about my opinions on these layoffs, why they're happening, but I don't want to focus on that in this particular episode. In this particular episode, I want to focus more on the people being impacted by these layoffs. This is a particularly rough ride for them. Not only are you having to come to terms with being made redundant, but because this is now so common, you have company. And yeah, there is some comfort in that, but you have a lot of company. I'll explain more as we go on. If you're in this position, this podcast is for you. Here are six tips to help you move forward after being made redundant. Tip number one, take a break. You may be tempted to start looking for a role straight away. Don't do it. Don't do it. Looking for a job before you've had the chance to process the shock of the layoff may extend the time it takes you to find something new and could actually do more damage. As with any traumatic event, you need time to decompress and deconstruct everything that has taken place. The experience will have likely caused a lot of stress and exhaustion. At such times, it's best to rest, recuperate, re energize, and gain an objective perspective of what has happened. Basically, you need a hard reset. If you start applying for roles straight away, the trauma you've experienced, and yes, being laid off is traumatic, the trauma you've experienced is still heavy and present, and it will impact your job search approach and success. You'll make desperate and scatty decisions. You'll perform interviews in a hasty and distant manner, which effectively leads to you not getting an interview or not performing well in interviews. And your confidence then takes more knocks. We don't want that. So take a break, even if it's two days doing nothing, take a break. Tip number two, acclimatize. So ideally this break we've just mentioned will be a minimum of one week. If you can afford to wait longer, do that. Use this time to understand what you want to do next and the lay of the land when it comes to the job market. At the moment, for instance, due to the huge amount of layoffs across many industries, this is an employer-driven market. It is no longer a candidate-driven market. In case you're wondering the difference between the two, a candidate-driven market is a job market where candidates drive the market. For instance, there are many roles and not enough candidates. And this means candidates are able to dictate their value. An employer-driven market is a job market where companies that are hiring have their pick because there are so many candidates in the market. In this scenario, the employer drives the market and dictates the value of candidates, or at least has a heavy influence on the value of candidates. At this point in time, there are more candidates than usual in the market looking for work. What does this mean for you? Competition is higher than usual. And naturally, this means the decision making of companies that are hiring is far more subjective or fickle than usual. This ultimately means it may take longer than you're used to to find the right opportunity. I'm flagging this because it is very important that you understand that this is a reflection of the market and not you. Please bear this in mind when job hunting. This is the market and not you. Tip number three, network. 
network and connect with people. Don't be afraid to let your LinkedIn network know you are looking for something new. What do you have to lose? This is so common now, there is nothing to be ashamed of. When sharing that you're looking for something new, be clear about the type of opportunities you're looking for. Reconnect with ex-colleagues to find out if they have anything in their current organization or if they know anyone else or any other companies that may be hiring. Leverage your network and don't be afraid to approach people you come across and don't know. I won't go into too much detail about approaching people on LinkedIn because I've covered this in another episode. So if you want to find out more about that, please check out how to approach people on LinkedIn. Tip number four, prepare and research. I remember when the pandemic hit and we had a huge wave of layoffs. The company I was working for at the time was one of the few companies still recruiting. We were not short of candidates to speak to. However, I saw something had changed in the way candidates were approaching interviews. It felt like they were just looking for a job, any job. It was so obvious because they didn't care enough to research the company. They knew nothing about us, nor did they bother to spend any time looking into the responsibilities and requirements of the role. There was even one occasion where someone was literally making up the details of the role and it was completely wrong. During this period, most times the answers given in interviews were so generic. They could have been for just about any job for any company, honestly. And I still see a lot of this to date. Now, I know looking for a job can be a job in itself and it can be exhausting, especially when you have the pressures of needing to earn money to pay your bills and look after your family. But if you're putting in the effort to apply, you may as well put in the effort to apply properly and to prepare for the interview. Not putting in the fundamental groundwork leads to a disappointing outcome, which you ideally want to limit as best as you can at this time. Not only because you want to be offered a job, but so you do not become disheartened by continued rejection or things not working out. For anyone job seeking at the moment, as a minimum, you have to prepare and do your research. The market is too competitive for shortcuts. Tip number five, seek external validation. This is the one time I would encourage this. You can review your own CV a trillion times and think it's the best thing since sliced bread. And I do love bread, maybe a little too much. Then hand it over to someone who notices all the basic mistakes on your CV that your mind ignored because it knows your intention. Getting this outside perspective is so important because it is objective. The person doesn't need to know or understand your role or industry. A recruiter rarely does, but your CV should be digestible and it should educate the reader about you as a professional. So get fresh eyes on your CV. Also, try to do mock interviews with someone and get feedback on how you're delivering your answers. Are your answers making sense? Are you answering the questions at all? Are your answers succinct enough or do you waffle? This exercise helps you build your interview skills and ability to communicate confidently about yourself. Tip number six, persevere. As mentioned many times throughout this episode, this is a highly competitive market, which means you can't let negative outcomes affect you. This is just the nature of the job market right now. You will likely receive more no's than yeses. Again, this is not a reflection of you. Learn what you can from the experience to be better prepared for the next. Shake it off. And I mean this literally. I've heard this works. (laughs) And keep pushing forward. Be persistent, be consistent and persevere. I wish anyone looking for work right now the best of luck. I truly do. If you need help with any of these elements, please reach out to me. My consulting services supports people with all the areas covered in today's episode. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Just look up my name or you can email me at lola at a human perspective.com. I wish you all the best. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of A Human Perspective. I'll see you in the next.